Welcome to Red Power Brewery. Um, yeah, so we're the only wood-fired brewery in Australia. Um, I think there's only a handful left in the world, but it's pretty much still the same process. Um, we just use a, um, the wood for the, for the kettle instead of um, the gas. Most people have gone to gas these days, but we still find it um, easier to do everything naturally. We do everything naturally by hand. Um, still got the old school capping machines here, so the old one arm bandits. So most places have gone to automated things and machinery and that sort of stuff and you'll walk into breweries and see pipe work everywhere but so we still pumps and hoses and yeah, elbow grease. Or oh, hands on. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So hands on every step of the way. And um, to buy your brews, uh, so do you buy them, can you, you buy them online or? You can, yeah. Then... We do most sales through here, but you can jump on our Facebook or Instagram pages or send us an email and we'll ship them anywhere in Australia. And then I'll, I'll take advantage of your four beer choice for 15 there. Definitely want to try the fruit sour. Fruit sour, yeah, sure. But if I could suggest then you pick three beers for myself. I'm not a stout type of drinker Okay, of beer, yeah, not so many as that. Yeah, I'll leave it upon you to, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so you would like any more sours with that one or? Well, we'll see how that one goes and if it's good, I'll, uh, I'll have some more. <laughs> right, after all those three beers, the fourth one, this one here. This one's called the Raspberry Fruit Sour. It's got a 4.6 alcohol content and it is mm, doing my taste buds big time. It's yummy, lovely. Raspberries, it's not sour, too bad. Ah, that's good. Love it. I'm definitely getting a bottle of that. Just having an absolute awesome time here in Rome. Not to mention just the, the history that we've been through. And then it's kind of like, well, we're getting hungry, a little peckish. So we go down to the, uh, the jerky, the Mike, uh, Mike's jerky, awesome, great service, got to go and see. Um, we had a beautiful drink at um, the Rogue um, Brewery, that was really, really nice. Then we come into Rogue itself, into the town, and we had a, um, a little dip into the old chocolate store next door, the Rogue Chocolate. And uh, we're finishing off with a lovely Rogue Ice Cream. This is an awesome little store. So we've got a um, salted caramel boysenberry and Jude's got a rum and raisin and licorice. Top notch. Well, g'day, welcome back again, good morning. We left our robe this morning and uh, we're making our way uh, further further down. We come to this place, Woke Wine Cutting. Right, as I walk over towards it, I must apologize for our sound quality lately. Um, we've been, uh, uh, we've had these little $40 uh, microphones, so uh, they've done okay, a little bit poor in quality sometimes. So we splashed out and got a nice uh, DJI one but uh, we seem to have a little incompatibility issue, which uh, has taken us a little while to realize. And uh, so yeah, broken these little babies out until we can sort out uh, our other mic. Anyway, yeah, this bloke, uh, what was his name? McCourt, I think it was. He, um, he had a bit of land here. Problem was, up the back here, it was really swampy and he wanted to open it up and uh, make it a little bit more feasible. So he approached the Shire, I think it was, or the uh, the officials and said, I'd like to uh, whack in a little cutting. And uh, they kind of go like, yeah, yeah, all righty, sounds all good, yep. So uh, before you knew it, he uh, got his machinery going. He had a bit of uh, bit of uh, heavy industry type uh, experience behind him. So he saw this other bloke, um, McIntyre, and he said, uh, do you want me to help, help me give me a hand? Both into it. And before you knew it, they started up here they did a 33 meter um, gap at the top here, and then they uh, started digging and digging and digging. I think it went 30 odd meters down, and it was three meters at the bottom, and it was a kilometer long. And um, once he sort of got down there, they then obviously broke the other end out and uh, started draining the, uh, the swamp out. It went down through this cutting and down into um, another type of uh, wetland, uh, lake area down the bottom. 
So, um, yeah, it's a pretty amazing feat. It took them um, three years, or well, the two of them, took them three years, bit of blasting. And I don't know whether you can really see it very well behind me, but it's a D7 um, dozer in there. I think he had another one with a ripper. And the dozer here, uh, the, uh, the dozer was pulling this uh, scraper at the back. So that thing there did uh, 5,000 hours over the three years. And uh, we'll walk over here, excuse the wind, doing my best to try and um, hold the wind back. But there's a beautiful structure here being made, a little cantilevered uh, platform that pops you out over into the uh, the valley and uh, it's a little bit, you get a little bit shaky leg when you come here because it's kind of like when will it stop going down and down and down but uh, pretty amazing. So up that way behind me is where the land was swampy and uh, I don't know whether you can make it out but you can see the, the scrape marks, the tire marks and bits and pieces on the bank. So obviously you started up here, made this sort of like 30 odd meter um, wide top and then just kept on going down. And as he kept going down, it got narrower and narrower to where down the bottom, it's only three meters wide, which is pretty much the, the width of the, uh, the, the scraper. And uh, it ended up being 30 odd meters deep and it runs for a kilometer. And over in the back there, you can see the dunes and there's a little bit of a, a probably a wetland and things down in there. So hope that all comes through on this uh, another windy day. We've really been copping it lately. Haven't had much luck. This would be actually absolutely awesome again for Jude to fly the drone. But um, yeah, for some reason she's not terribly keen to do that. <laughs> so there you have it, woke one cutting. Pretty amazing, 1957, two blokes, two machines, 30 meters across, three meters at the bottom, 30 meters down, one kilometer wide, 270,000 cubic meters of material moved. Got the job done, good on them. It's a bit windy out there, so I'll give you the formalities here. So, uh, World War II, in between the 1940s, 1941, there was a, uh, well, in particular, a mine ship. I think it was called the Penguin, German mine ship, and it was dropping some mines out. Anyway, over that period of time, a few of them were found, and uh, one here washed up on shore. I think it was uh, July 1941. So, the uh, able seamen, Doynton and Todd, were in charge of uh, disposing of the uh, the mine and um, so they laid some charges, some wires and we were about ready to uh, detonate it when a train came by and cut the, the wires. So they had to relay the wires and the process of setting it back up again, a rogue wave came along and uh, rocked the mine onto one of its detonating horns and up she went. So sadly these two blokes were the first two Australians um, killed on Australian so soil during the World War II. So we'll just have a quick little walk up here in amongst the wind again. And there you have it. It's a replica, but it gives you an idea. Each one of those little horns is the, uh, the detonator that sets off the explosive.